And I thought, well, you know, maybe this is something in which my biking might lend itself and able to raise the funds, $50,000 is what we're looking at, in order to complete that children's home there in India. So to me, it's a matter of being able to bring those two together and uh, make it a win-win situation all the way around. Welcome back to another episode of the Born to Be podcast uh, here with the Zoom sessions and excited to have Dan Farrell on the podcast today. And uh, Dan is in the process of, uh, of a goal of biking 8,428 miles uh, this year uh, to raise money and some, some, support, some support for Faith and Deeds, uh, a ministry that's doing great things in India. We're going to hear about that uh, Dan, that's that's a lot of miles. I can't wait to hear the story of what motivated you to want to ride eight eighty four hundred miles on your bike. Uh, I can't wait to get into it. Yeah, me too, and I can't wait to be able to share that with you. Um, biking is just one of those things that's a real passion of mine. I love to do it, and I've always wondered, you know, how in the world can I? One way or another, combine my passion for biking and have that honor Christ is what it amounts to, honor God. And uh, in my talking with Gerald Stanley, he was able to share with me about faith in deeds and how they are trying to wrap up the construction of their children's home there in India. And uh, he was able to share with me their outreach there within the community not only for their physical needs, but also their spiritual needs, how they get involved with discipleship, uh, people with leprosy, uh, things of that nature. And it really impressed me. And I thought, well, you know, maybe this is something in which my biking might lend itself and able to raise the funds, $50,000 is what we're looking at, in order to complete that children's home there in India. So to me, it's a matter of being able to bring those two together and uh, make it a win-win situation all the way around. Absolutely, Dan. So what's what's the significance of 8,428 uh, 8, miles? What's the significance there? Well, from what I understand, Gerald looked into it, and that's the mileage from Indianapolis there to where the children's home is there in India. So when you finish, <laughs> you could have literally ridden your bike to India. You're exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy that's, is what it is. <laughs> That's that's a haul, and that yeah, absolutely impossible unless you had a uh, a bike with some flotation uh, tires. Uh, the, the trip across the Atlantic would be a little damp. Well, you know, Dan, I love it that you're bringing the, the new passions together. And so, what I wanted maybe to, to unpack is is where did these two passions start? Both your passion for for biking, your passion for Christ, and and so take us back to the beginning of of kind of both the biking and the faith journey for you. Well, really, I guess the terms of the biking um, live. Grew up in Ohio, born in Ohio, and um, we lived out in the country. And it was a small town, Westerville, kind of like what Noblesville is the, to Indianapolis. Uh, Westerville is the Columbus. And we lived out in the country, and biking was my primary way of getting into town, being able to see my friends, be able to share with them. So just being able to have the freedom to be on the bike, to be out there in nature, uh, just always seemed to be something that was really special for me. Hmm. And uh, in terms of my own spiritual journey, I uh, was able to become a Christian at a very young age and uh, be able to dedicate my life to Christ. And in everything that I do, I always want to try to honor him whatever way I can. So really, it's a matter of being able to be on that bike and uh, be able at this point uh, be able to be out there early in the morning, uh, especially when I'm on the Mono Trail, going up to Sheridan. Uh, usually it's very early in the morning. Thank God I, I, I'm a morning person, so I have a lot of energy at that point. And uh, come nighttime, it's just the opposite. But uh, mornings are just a very special time. The solitude, the peace, uh, being able to see him open up a new day, the dawn, and uh, be able to pray. Uh, along the way. And that's really when I do a lot of my time of prayers while I'm on the bike. I mean, I'm spending hours and hours and hours on the bike and uh, just conversational prayer with him, thanking him for all the blessings that he has given me 
as I approach an intersection or anything like that, I ask for his guidance and care and protection. And uh, it's just really been a, a very rewarding experience all the way around, each and every day. Mm. But uh, it's really strengthened my faith is what it amounts to. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in our spiritual DNA uh, course that I teach, Dan, one of the things we help people uh, unpack is is uh, one of the assessments is the spiritual pathways. It helps you know uh, kind of the unique ways that you can connect with God. And one of the pathways is is uh, is called is a naturalist. And I'm wondering if if that's you know maybe one of your spiritual pathways. It sounds like as you're talking about being out there writing is is that it's it's that time in nature, it's that time watching God. You know, like you talked about, wake up a new day is is seems like that's when you you really sense and and draw close to Him. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, just you know, of course, we can connect with Him anytime, and I do. It's just conversational prayer throughout the day for whatever challenges I'm facing, anything along those lines. But um, be able to be alone on the bike in the early morning, the solitude, the peace, uh, just makes it a very special time in order to connect with that. And so I experienced it on these bike trips locally to raise the funds. But then also I biked extensively throughout the United States, Canada, Estonia, Sweden, and that type of thing. And uh, being able to see his creation, uh, just continually amazed at what he has made and how he has shared it with me in such a profound way. I just appreciate every moment of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Dan, I, I can, uh, the passion you have and the dedication for it, uh, I, I love, and you can just see as you're talking about it, but when did this start? I mean, you started when you were young, but I think, I, I, I'm going to say this as, uh, as gently as I can, as you know, I, I can tell you're not in your twenties, right? <laughs> and so, uh, how old are you? Uh, 72. 72 years young. Yeah. I don't think there's too many 72 year olds that are trying to log, you know, 8,000 miles this year on a bike. <laughs> Have you Maybe ever, not. I mean, I mean, has that ever played into like even, have you ever thought to yourself, man, is this, is this crazy? What am I trying to do at 72 biking like this? Is that, is that ever come into your brain or is it just, it's just natural to you? Well, maybe to back up just a little bit. Um, I've always been into running and, uh, there at my office, I got a cork board that's about five feet by five feet. And it's got all my bib numbers. And usually it's just all half marathons, a couple full marathons, and as I've gotten older, uh, running really takes its toll on your body physically. And uh, But I enjoyed running. Um, I was nothing really all that competitive or anything like that. But um, just, and it was a time of prayer as well, when I'd be out there running in the morning and that type of thing. But um, I've always enjoyed biking. It's more of a sense of speed, a um, little less effort, <laughs> and certainly less wear and tear on the body. Mm-hmm. So I would say that probably uh, sometime uh, in the mid 80s, a uh, number of years ago, um, you know, 30, 35 years ago, uh, my dad and I, we would do some biking over in Ohio and uh, we would share on some of the different uh, bike tours that they'd have over, have my boys, my, my two sons join me. And uh, it always made it a special experience. And um we were able to expand that uh, with my boys and my dad, depending upon the circumstances and their availability, um, some of these trips throughout the United States. So that's always been a special time for us. And really what made it special is that really you were looking at the time, three generations involved there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had my dad, myself, and my sons. So um, really made for a lot of great memories that we could all share in and look back on and um, be able to, to really thank God that we're able to have those precious times together. Mm, absolutely. Will this be the first ride you've done, uh, you know, to raise money for uh, a charity cause, or is, is that something you've, you've brought a missional element to your writing multiple times? No, this would be the first time for that. And um, I've always thought, well, you know, I'm putting in, before I was just going back and forth to work. And a uh, round trip is probably about 20 miles or so, nothing really all that extensive. And I thought, well, you know, it'd really be great if some way, shape or form, uh, this passion for biking could be 
in such a way that it could promote God's kingdom here on earth in a more tangible way. And again, that's when I had the conversation with Gerald and uh, be able to arrive at this point that we're at right now. Hmm. What is, um, what is interesting is, is you shared before we got on here, Dan, about uh, some of the, the parallels that you have, uh, that you have drawn from the principles of, of riding, uh, of riding your bike and, and how that parallels uh, the, the life of following uh, Christ. And I thought some of it was, uh, was, was really fascinating and, and encouraging as I read it. Could you just un- unpack some of that for us as far as some of those parallels that you've drawn? Yeah. Yeah. I'd be happy to. Um, I guess one of the first things, uh, it amazes me that, that you can ride a bike. I mean, to be on two wheels and be upright, kind of like a gyroscope or something along those lines. But uh, to me, it's the idea that on a bike, you always have to move forward. If you're not going to move forward, well, then you're going to fall off the bike. And uh, so to me, that's a great analogy in terms of, of life itself. You always have to move forward regardless of what the circumstances are. Uh, you really can't stop. Uh, you have to move forward in some way, shape, or form. And then also, I think it's really important to make sure that we have the proper balance in life, just like on a bike. Uh, if you're overloaded one way or another, uh, it makes it more difficult to ride the bike. And it's the same thing with life. We have You can have baggage that one way or another can overload us and uh, can really trip us up, so to speak, so you don't want that to happen. Hmm. Also, what's nice about being on a bike is that you can be you have to be flexible you have to be able to shift the gears if you're going uphill if you're going against a uh, challenging headwind anything like that uh, so you have to be flexible and be able to shift the gears and uh, to me that's very much like what we have to do in terms of our own lives with the challenges we face uh, as Christians we have to be in prayer with God every day we have to have Make sure that we have that we're in the Word, uh, having the counsel of, of wise friends, things of that nature can really help us a lot as we face life's challenges. And then also, even when the going is great on a bike, um, you're going downhill, you got the wind to your back, uh, you know inevitably somewhere down the line you're going to be going back uphill, <laughs> and you're going to be facing that headwind. So you always want to make sure that you're prepared for that for any type of future adversities that there might be. Also want to make sure that you're tenacious, persistent, uh, focused, and you persevere in reaching your destination on a bike. And obviously within the Christian life, we have to do that same thing in terms of being focused as to where we're going, on what his the opportunities that he gives to us day in and day out, that we can honor him in everything that we do in that we're not one way or another distracted uh, by the ways of the world. Just like uh, on a bike, you can't be distracted by the traffic. Uh, You want to make sure that you're always having attention to what's going on around you. And certainly knowing what your destination is on a bike, how to get there, uh, whether it be by map or GPS, anything like that. And obviously, as a Christian, we need to use God's word, the Bible, as our means of being able to get to our heavenly home, our destination there. And I was thinking about the bike itself, and uh, you have a bike mirror, and how it's really a small device, and you're able to see what's behind you and what's coming up alongside you traffic-wise. But it's a very limited view in that you see what's, again, up but it doesn't interfere so much with what you see in front of you. So it gives you a greater vision of what's ahead. And to my, myself, I think that as Christians, we have to do the same thing in terms of not dwelling on the past, uh, but be able to look at what's in front of us and be able to f- focus on those opportunities that uh, God has given us and make sure that one way or another, They were able to take advantage of those and be able to honor him in all that we do. On a bike, uh, need to be visible, to be safe. Uh, As Christians, we don't want our deeds to be hidden under a basket. 
but to have them be visible to honor him. Uh, when it's dark on a bike, you need to have that light to show the way. And certainly as a Christian, we want the Bible to light our path as well. Also on a bike, uh, you try to be as safe as you can be with the mirrors, wearing bright clothing, the helmet, lights, obeying the traffic rules. And as a Christian, you do all that you can to be, live a life that's Christ-like, but then you have to rely on God to do the rest is what it amounts to. So there's an element of faith that comes into that, that you can only do so much on your own. And then you're in his hands and looking for his guidance and protection to take you from there. Hmm. Wow. I love that. There's so many different uh, elements. So you can think of it, 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 you can, it can seem so simple of just like, yeah, you just ride the bike. You know what I mean? But the, all of those parallels, uh, they make a ton of sense. And I, I love that you've brought, um, you know, that's, uh, that's something that, that I think, I mean, you know, even teaching school age kids, you know what I mean? Or, or just being able to, to bring some of those principles and draw them out of everyday, everyday life. And I love that's what, what Jesus did so well of just, you know, being able to, to find common things in life that we would know and be able to fill them with, with spiritual meaning. And, you know, what about, what would you say to someone who might say like, how in the world, you know, does just something as, uh, you know, as maybe unspiritual, if you will, or whatever, of biking. Like how, how, how can you bring biking and, and something with Jesus together? Like you should keep those separate. Like you should do just church stuff at church or whatever. And, you know, it, there's, there's no way to, to, to make this a, uh, you know, a, a, a missional or a godly approach. What would you say to somebody that may, that may doubt the, the connection between those two? Well, to me, I think that when you turn your life over to God, and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you look for opportunities in any and every way to honor him, is what it amounts to. And to me, there should be no separation whatsoever in terms of a secular life and a spiritual life. Hmm. That uh, we live in the world, uh, we are to honor him within the world with the guidance of the Holy Spirit and, and, and take off the blinders of our own selfish selves and uh, be open to those opportunities in which we can serve. So to me, being on a bike and being able to be passionate on the bike and be able to use that as a means of raising funds for the, for the faith and deeds, uh, to me, there's a huge tie in there. And to me, that can be applicable to anyone with whatever passions and talents and abilities they have be open to be used uh, for God and be able to promote his kingdom here on earth. Yeah. I love it. We talk about that so often in spiritual DNA is helping people, you know, really uncover what's their passion. And one thing is I always tell people is uh, I think a lot of people have a struggle to believe that God would be, you know, good enough to allow them to, to actually use something that they really enjoy to serve him. Like they, you know, I think sometimes, um, you know, God's will in our life, you know, gets a bad rap. People think, well, he's going to make me do something I hate, or it's going to be, be terrible. And I love the fact that, that, you know, uh, that word passion, I always talk about it, that it's, it comes from the Latin word paseo, which means suffering. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think God allows us to, you know, encourages us to go and, and serve in an area of passion because we won't, we won't quit when the going gets tough. You know, we're willing to, you know, we're willing to suffer for it because it, it brings us joy in what we do. And I'm, I'm, I can, I can tell you for me, if I had to ride 8,000 miles, there would be a lot of suffering <laughs> involved in it, man. But, um, how, how are you, uh, how are you raising the funds? And I want to make sure if, if, uh, as people hear your story, they want to help what's going on. What's a way that they can, they can jump on board with you and, and be able to give and, and help make this happen. Yeah. Well, um, uh, Gerald is putting together a website. He hopes to have this wrapped up, I think, uh, pretty soon next week or so. And we're going to have our official launch on July 6th. Okay. And, and within that, uh, we'll be able to uh, publicize it far and wide and be able to have people support this effort. Um, I would assume that it's going to be something that uh, on a per mile basis, whatever that might be, a couple cents, a cent, half cent, quarter cent, whatever it might be. And uh, to be able to raise the funds, $50,000 that we're looking at in order to complete the children's home there for faith and deeds there in India. Okay. Well, once you guys get that launched, when we, when we uh, release this episode, we'll definitely uh, 
connect all the all the dots for that so people can build to click over and 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 support you. So you it, will that be your first official ride towards the eighty four hundred miles on 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 July six? You said. Well, no, I've been uh, tracking my mileage ever since the beginning of the year. Oh, okay. Where are you at right now? Uh, just over forty six hundred miles. Okay. Okay. So you're on track. We're in, we're, this is what we're in June. So this is six months in. So you, you, you keep yeah. going with your clicky guy. You'll be fine. Yeah. 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 We're in good shape. So we just got to keep on, keep on trucking, so to speak. <laughs> what does that break down to average per, per week Dan, as far as riding? Uh, usually what I try to do is pack in, uh, at least 50, 60 miles a day is what it amounts to. Usually in the morning I'm putting in, uh, about three hours. And then uh, before work, and then after work, maybe another hour and a half, couple of hours, you know, just taking a long way to work and then a long way back home. So, so it's 50 uh, or 60 miles a day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that just seven like, days a week? Uh, five days a week. Five, five days, days a week. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Weekends are usually pretty busy. So uh, I'm really tied up with a lot of stuff here at home and whatnot. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. yeah, it's basically five days a week. Right on. Well, Dan, I love it. And I just, I love that you've taken something that, that anyone could do. And I think, you know, oftentimes we, um, we see a need and obviously there's great need in what's going on with India and what Faith and Deeds is, is, is doing. And, and you can be overwhelmed by the thought of, of the suffering or the pain or the struggle or the, 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 the lack of resources and just kind of throw your hands up and go, you know, what am I going to do halfway around the world? You know what I mean? Or I'm not, I'm not, you know, that's not my career. I'm not trained in it, or I'm not a professional missionary or whatever people's excuses could be. And I love that you've just taken something that, you know, you've gotten creative and said, guy, give me a creative idea. I mean, here's, here's what I love to do. How can we creatively partner together and make a difference? And, and you are, you're going to, and uh, I hope it inspires a ton of people. It makes me think of my friend, uh, Andy, who many years ago, he, uh, he really got on fire for the Lord. And he said, he said, Darren, he said, I, uh, I want to, you know, I want to do something for God. And he's, and I said, well, you know, just consider what you're passionate about. And, and he'd come through our spiritual DNA course and the workshop. And, and he came back, he said, Darren, he's like, the two things I'm most passionate about are tailgating and Jesus. And he was like, <laughs> he's like, I'm not exactly sure what, what those could be, but uh, what ended up happening was cool is um, he got inspired by the ministry that I started pub theology, where we were do where we do outreach events and local bars and restaurants. And so he started tailgate theology. And so before Colts games here in Indianapolis, he would set up, you know, a tailgate and, uh, and, you know, talk to people, hand out free, you know, burgers and, and, and brats. And mm-hmm. it, it actually, uh, began to, to snowball. And eventually he was at, he was at uh, Basie's downtown, uh, grill right next to the stadium. And he would do, uh, before the game, he would set up and do football trivia and stuff. And he would get up and do a little, you know, thought about Jesus and he would answer questions and, uh, they raised money for charities. And it was just cool to see. He just said, you know, what do I love? I love tailgating. and I love Jesus. And, and you've done that with biking. And, uh, by the end of this year, uh, you're going to ride 80, 84, you know, hundred miles. And you're going to, you're going to raise his $50,000 for, for this need in India. And so, I'm inspired, Dan. Uh, I love it. And uh, when you get the, the website launched, uh, we'll, we'll push it out through our social media channels and, uh, and be able to, uh, to help you get towards that goal. But uh, I love it. I love the, uh, the idea, the creativity, and the dedication of it. And um, I just, man, thanks for coming on the, the podcast today. And, and I hope that, uh, you know, I know you're going to inspire people to start thinking creatively about what they can do to use the things they love uh, to serve the Lord. It's great stuff. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely.